Thanks, man. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Ignacio Contreras, and I'm fortunate enough to work for Qualcomm on the Next Generation Telematics Group. Basically, if you, if you don't have a background on Qualcomm, the, the company is a Fortune 500 firm that is hugely involved in the development of technologies for the cellular industry. It's the number one uh, manufacturer and provider of baseband chipset for cell phones. And it's the company that basically developed the CDMA standard that is now pretty pre spread around the world on all 3G systems. So all the company is about cell phones and wireless connectivity. And this is kind of our last frontier. This is when, when the markets on cell phones are achieving 90% of penetration and basically just those, all of those are saturated. Companies like Qualcomm are looking at vehicles as part of the main machine-to-machine -machine segments where we can expand or we can do business about. And particularly the vehicle, it's particularly, the vehicle is particularly interesting because it's a mobile node. And since it's mobile, it's one of those segments of machine-to-machine mach, machine communications where wireless, where cellular can add most of the value. And the trends that we have seen here in the vehicle space is that more and more m many functions of the vehicles are going into the cloud. So all the entertainment, all the navigation systems, all the safety system on the car that used to be just residing on the car itself now are moving into the cloud, not are depending on connectivity to offer increased uh, levels of functionality. So you have the examples of radio and infotainment systems that now are going, for example, with Pandora on the car, in which you can you, you rely on connectivity to offer the entertainment. OnStar, in the case that you're relying on connectivity to offer safety, and many cases of connected navigation in which the maps or the information, uh, the ge geographic information, is not stored on the car itself. You are relying on the cloud. You are relying on connectivity to access that information and therefore to provide the service. So every single day, every single year, the role of connectivity is becoming increasingly relevant on this space. And this is why we think that wireless communications, and particularly commercial cellular networks, can add a lot of value in the future. Very interesting, there are kind of two visions here. And one of our roles here is try to consolidate those visions and create some conversions on that side. So one side of vision, you can think of systems like Fort Sync, in which the, the main premise is that bring your own connectivity. So the car provides some intelligence, the car provides some functionality, but the connectivity is on your cell phone. So you need to bring your cell phone or you need to bring your own wireless modem. You provide the connectivity and the car pro will provide the rest of the functionality. The other extreme of the spectrum here is the connectivity is heavily embedded into the car. And you have the example of OnStar, in which the functions are so embedded into the car, especially the safety functions, that the connectivity is embedded into the car in the factory. And then the connectivity is provided as a service to the, to the, to the end user. So what we see here in the future is that it will be a mix of both worlds. You will have some of the applications, some of the intelligence, and even some of the connectivity residing on the car for example, for, um, for navigation or for safety issues, for sa safety features. And some of the functions will, will run on the car. But on the other side, some of the functions will also run on your smartphone. And some applications, for example, your entertainment, your videos, your music will be stored in your smartphone. And the car will become just an extension of the user interface. And therefore, we are just working with car manufacturers and some other people in the ecosystem just try to bring on what are the, is the right combination of intelligence and connectivity in the car versus intelligence and connectivity in your phone. I'm sorry for, for the crowded slide there, but basically the main message is that as you add more connectivity and, and as you enhance the quality of the connectivity, for example, going from 2G connectivity to fourth generation cellular networks, you will see more and more functions and more and more advanced features into the car. And not only this will enhance current applications like safety, navigation, and multimedia, as we have been speaking, but it will create uh, a space for new applications coming into the market. 
This is probably one of the most critical slides here in this deck. This talks about the main issue of the different life cycles that you have in phones and consumer electronics versus the life cycle and design of the car. So in the, in the cell phone world, when you build all this connectivity, you're just shipping one billion phones every single year, which is cars will never be as close as that. You see that the life cycle, it's about one year, 18 months, and then boom, you go into a next generation ship, you go into a next generation technology, or you go into enhance that. On the other side, when you, you, you think about cars, cars are designed, are brought to market in a seven year period. And this is a huge problem because the car manufacturers are not able to piggyback and just to take whatever parts, whatever technology is created into the cell phone world because they need the technology to be somehow stable. They be, the technology to be somehow contact and lead that seven, 10 year period in order just to, just to go to the market to create those cars and to create the functionality and the connectivity embedded into the car. The way that we see that's the, that this problem uh, will be solved into the future, it's by decoupling the, the life cycles, and this is the approach that XM Radio took, in which they just take parts from, just from the electronic market, very just quick around, turn around of parts, but they created the box and the box for the car manufacturers comply with some specifications that the car manufacturer can rely on that do not change over time. In other words, whatever is there on the market for consumer electronics, you take that, you build your box, and that box is what you sell to the car manufacturers to provide connectivity. And parts within this box will change constantly, will change uh, on a yearly basis, on a 18 month basis. But what the car manufacturer sees in terms of the functionality and the connectivity of that box will remain constant for a long period of time. And this is where we are spending a lot of efforts in order just to create or design what are the requirements for, for this particular box for car manufacturers. So the technology that already is running on the consumer electronics side will be applicable to the automaker world. And what will make things very, very exciting from now on is the challenge of the electric vehicles. And we are very fortunate here in San Diego, since San Diego will be one of the hot spots, not only in the United States, but also in the world, in terms of additional electric vehicles. And what we see here is that the electric vehicle, it's the requirement for connectivity in the electric vehicle are much greater than the requirements for uh, connectivity in regular internal combustion cars. Proof of that is that by the end of the year, you will see two mainstream electric cars into the market, the Chevy Volt and the Nissan Leaf. And both of them will include connectivity from day one. Both of them will include connectivity as a standard, not a, as a feature add-on, because it's very relevant for the electric vehicle to have connectivity in order to solve many of the problems that we will see. And the problem with connectivity for the electric car is not for the car itself, it's also for the charging infrastructure. And the charging infrastructure will, be need, will need to be smart enough to connect to the car and to perform several functions there in order to include this car into what is called the smart grid. A car, in terms of the electric load, a, a, a charging car represents about the same size as a whole house charging at the same time. If you put four cars charging all at the same time at 24 volts in a neighborhood and you will see your local transformer blowing up. So, it's critical to add some intelligence, it's critical to add what is called smart charging, so you just are able to handle all this, handle all this charging process and avoid stressing the local grid and avoid charging at peak times where most of the electricity produced comes from what you can see it's dirty sources. It's not perfect match with renewable sources. So, the electric car is, presents a, a very nice future, especially when we talk here about all dependence, because if you, if you use electric cars, at the very minimum, you will be able to reduce your greenhouse gases emissions. Like you see, so the, the bar number one there is the traditional internal combustion car, and the bar number two is using electric vehicles supplied only by electricity produced with coal, and even just just burning coal to produce electricity into and to um, 
fuel electric cars will be much better in terms of greenhouse emission compared with the standard combustion car. But the holy grail is that if you're able to synchronize the charging of electric vehicles with the production of renewable energy, you can improve that result in a much better way. And if you're able just to synchronize the charging of electric vehicles with solar power, with wind power, which by nature is unpredictable, but with communications you can just create this synchronization, you will be able just to achieve a much better goal in terms of reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Very quick, very quickly here, the challenges for utilities with electric vehicles is the localization, because as I said before, electric vehicles are expected to uh, are expected to show in the market in clusters, in concentrations. So therefore, it, either you will have to invest in grid infrastructure to support those vehicles, or add some intelligence in order to handle the lo the load represented by the charge of electric vehicles, and it's much cheaper or much smarter from our perspective to do the, to do the latter. The second is capacity. Even, even if, you, if you put 5% of the vehicles right now to, to turn them to be electric vehicles, that will represent a minor load into the electrical system. It's, it's not such a big load. But the problem that is that if you put that vehicle to charge at the peak, let's say, 4 to 6 p.m. when people, when people return uh, to, from, from work to home, you will have an issue because you will be adding peak capacity. Therefore, you will have to build new power plants, and very likely those power plants will not be very clean power plants. Charging station management, as I said before, you need to add intelligence in order just to distribute this load in terms of, in terms of time and in terms of the avoid concentration of charging electric vehicles. Um, in order just to provide most of the benefit and avoid the stress in the grid. And the economics are also need to be solved because when you charge matters, matters for you and matters for the local utility. And very likely you will, be, you will receive price signals, you will receive the incentives to charge during off-peak times to avoid this, the, the stress in the local grid. But that will require some level of connectivity and that's why we see that connectivity will play a role in much greater way with electric vehicles versus the traditional internal combustion car. And for the car user, for the car owner also, connectivity brings a lot of value. There's a very common term in electric vehicle ecosystem which is called range anxiety. And that's basically your fear that the user of running out of use, that running out of electricity. Charging electric vehicles could take three, six, up to 12 hours. So it's not like you go to the charging stations just close by and just charge for five, five minutes. It needs to be a planned event. Therefore, it's very important to have a reservation and availability system because even if the charging station is on your GPS, you don't want just to show up and find out that the charging station will be used for the next three hours. You need to be able to locate in real time where are the charging stations and where, which charging stations are available and reserve that charging station in real time so you can just be sure that you will have the charging infrastructure available for you. And that's, again, why connectivity is critical for, char for the electric vehicle. It's not a nice to have. It's not just for entertainment and not only for safety. It's just for, to overcome these, all these challenges provided by the early deployment of electric vehicles. And what's interesting about the electric vehicle, again, is that it encompasses many of the use cases that we know it, what is called the smart grid. So variable prices, integration of renewable energy, peak management. The electric vehicle is not only part of the automotive space, it's part of the smart grid space. And that's why the CTO of Duke Energy and many others have called the electric vehicle the killer application of the smart grid. Because the connectivity is required and because it's such a huge load to the system but brings so many benefits that it will kickstart the ecosystem in order just to not only add connectivity to the electric grid but also take advantage and make create value from the connectivity um, that you are into the, what is so called the smart grid. Examples here of what, how are you foreseeing the future, that what you will see in your electric vehicle, you will see your map, you will see your navigation system, and range, again, inf range information will be 
significantly included and embedded into the user interface because you need to overcome this range and set. This fear that you will run off of electricity and use your, your ability to synchronize and to stay connected with the charging infrastructure in order just to be able to use the, your electric vehicle with the less pain or the, with the most convenience that you have out there. Again, charging reservation and management of charging stations from the car will be uh, significantly relevant in this ecosystem. And also some other functions like remote control, because some of the functions of the car, like heating or heating or, or cooling the car using the air conditioning system, will take a huge toll in your battery. This case, in, in this case, heat is not something that comes as it's, it's not a byproduct of the engine. You need, if you want to heat the car, you will have to use electricity from your battery. So it's much better if you can do that while the car is charging, while the car is connected to the grid, versus while, by doing that by taking energy from, from the car battery. Therefore, integration with, with, the, with, the, with the smartphone and the ability to remote control your car for this specific function will be critical if we want to achieve mainstream adoption of electric vehicles in the United States. With all, thank you very much for your attention here, and I look forward for your question if you have any. Thank you very much. Thank you.